Hi, everyone. I'm here with David Wright. How's it going, David? Good, Steve. All right. So today we're going to talk about how to stay fit, how to make healthy choices when you're traveling, which, you know, I don't travel a ton, but, you know, three, four, five times a year, my wife and I, we go somewhere and it's definitely um, an issue for us on, <clears throat> you know, it affects our decision making. So, and David, you're, you're right now getting ready for a competition, yep. um, a physique competition. So the way you travel is going to be a lot more strict than the way I travel. But uh, what are your first thoughts for the average person out there who just wants to keep their momentum going and stay in healthy while they travel? So I think for, you know, your, your average person who's traveling, one of the hardest things, and even, you know, for people who are competing like myself, one of the hardest things for me when I'm traveling is, you know, you want to experience, uh, you know, the different foods at different, you know, uh, areas of the country or other countries if you're traveling somewhere outside the U.S. But you want to you want to try these different types of foods or restaurants or whatnot. Um, but you also uh, may not be planning, you know, exercise into your, you know, vacation. I've heard a lot of people say, well, it's vacation. You know, I shouldn't, you know, be exercising or shouldn't they don't need to make time for it. And you know what, for, for some folks that that might be something that they that they don't make time for. But I will tell you that one of the struggles is, um, you know, for your everyday person who just wants to kind of maintain their health and just feel good while they're on that vacation or traveling for business or whatever the case might be. Um, one of the hardest things is to find, um, you know, healthy options for food um, that definitely I've experienced that a lot. Um, and I've had a lot of failures in that regard as well. So um, in saying, well, I'm going to eat healthy this time and then you know, not necessarily doing so. Um, but then you physically most of the time will feel that difference um, when you do that. But that's that's the one thing. Um, sometimes there's a little bit of looking into either restaurants or stores that are nearby where you're going to kind of plan ahead, which I like to do um, not a ton of research, not sitting there for hours, but hey, you know what? Where's my hotel that I'm going to be at? And you know, where's the nearest you know grocery store? Or if you're planning on going out to you know dinners with family, friends, business associates, whatnot, like where are you going? Um, and ahead of time, you know, see what the place has to offer and kind of make your selection. So you're not sitting there at the at the table, so to speak, and kind of under that pressure to, to order something, you go, ah, you know what, I'll just have this, you know, you know, huge meal and, you know, it'll, it'll be fine. And then, you know, that's the same thing you do the next day and the day after that, because, oh, I already did it yesterday. So I'm going to do it today because at the end of, you know, the week, the couple of days, whatever the case might be, a lot of times, you know, we end up going way overboard more than we thought. And, you know, we feel, you know, less energetic, things like that. So for me, it's all about, um, telling my clients when they're going on traveling, they're a little concerned is, you know, go look ahead of time and, and see where you're going to be. And just kind of in your mind, or even if you're like me, kind of putting it in my phone, make a plan of, of what you can do. So that way you already know, um, you know, kind of what your plan is ahead of time. And you don't have to kind of stress because stress will also lead to, you know, us making decisions we might not normally make at home and we make, you know, outside of home. So, that's always a good one. And then, you know, for fitness, part of it is, you know, the meals, but also getting exercise, whether that's in the gym somewhere, you know, wherever you're traveling or, you know, outdoors at a park, you know, are you going to be walking a lot, you know, those types of things always kind of have some sort of activity, at least, even if you're not going to go to a gym activity, that's going to keep you moving and get, keep your cardiovascular up and, you know, not be sedentary, at least as much as possible. Yeah, there's two things here on thinking about your health when you travel or when you're out of town. And the first thing, I mean, you kind of mentioned them both, so I'll kind of go over my perspective. The uh, first thing is how you eat, which you talked about. The second thing is how do you exercise? Mm -hmm. uh, you're away. Uh, some gyms have 
you know, if, if you're a member of a gym with a, it's a huge, there, there isn't a lot of huge, um, corporate gyms out there, like where they have them in every city. Cause the gym business is kind of a, you know, smaller type most, I mean, some of them will cover a whole state, but if you don't have that, you either have to go to a gym. But for me, everywhere we stay, they have a little workout room. Now, I'm not trying to get the workout in a week. If I'm gone for a week, I'm not trying to get that same workout that I would get in the gym that I normally go to. And sometimes my intensity level will be really high the week before, and I'll intentionally take a week off. Or maybe I'll go in the middle of the trip and I'll do a full body workout and just kind of active recovery, just get those muscles moving. So that's how I choose to lift weights. You can also take bands. Um, a lot of people do that. They take bands. You can do push ups and body squats and sissy squats and stuff like that in your room or wherever. And <clears throat> I tend to walk more when we go places. Instead of taking the car, we know that we're going, you know, a mile down the road, we'll walk instead of getting the car out and driving. So we'll do that. Now, as far as eating, you know, the places we go, we go to Lake Tahoe a lot. Um, and so we know the restaurants, we know the restaurants we like to go to and we, wherever we go, we know the restaurants and we go to the restaurants that we know, um, focus on organic and cooking healthy and so on. One of the first questions we always ask, especially breakfast is what are you cooking your food in? Mm -hmm. If they say canola oil, if they say margarine, which some will say, believe it or not, we, we ask, please cook our food in butter. It's never been a problem. I don't think they're misleading us. They, I make sure, write that down. I'm allergic to blah, 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 or whatever. I mean, not really, but kind of. I mean, everyone's allergic to margarine. Right. Um, so we ask them to cook in butter. Avoid deep fried foods because um, sometimes or a lot of times those uh, deep fried foods are cooked over and over. And of course you getting ready for a show. That's something you're never going to eat. <laughs> right. Your fats are going to be low. And it's almost like you got to pack your meals for your situation, but that's not the situation that most people are in. Mm -hmm. So, um, sometimes we'll, you know, my wife always takes our own salt and our own pepper because the salt and pepper on the table most likely is going to be garbage. So we take a quality salt, which is actually healthy. Um, and same with the pepper. And sometimes we'll take our own salad dressing. <laughs> She'll put it in her purse or whatever. Something that we know doesn't have seed oils in it. So there's a lot of little things that you can do. And, you know, when I go out, you know, you know, I'll have a beer and, or something like that or a cocktail. If I pick a cocktail, I try to pick one with the least amount of sugar um, something like that. So I'm consciously trying to pick something that's not the worst of two scenarios. So those are the things when you, when you're going out to eat, you know, keep your portions, right? We, we never eat dessert. Um, we just don't, um, we don't need it. So that's kind of the, the approach that I take as far as my exercise and as far as the type of food that we eat. <laughs> well, and I can tell you, Steve, that you made a good point in terms of the, uh, like the hotel or, or place you might be staying when you, when you go out of town on a trip um, and making sure, you know, ahead of time, it's super easy to take a look at, you know, websites, et cetera, see if they have a fitness center area. And typically they're fairly small, like the size of, you know, a room or two. Um, but some of them have, you know, a decent setup of, you know, a couple of, you know, cardio equipment things, um, but also sometimes some dumbbells and, and different stuff. So, you know, you can get a decent workout. It's to your point, not going to be the same as like if you came in here to 
fitness for 10 and, and this is where you work out all the time. Of course, it's not going to be the same as that, but you know, you don't have to go to a, a gym, you know, because some people will, will look at that and go, ah, you know what, I don't have time to drive to the gym or, you know, if it's not their, their, you know, national chain gym, uh, well, you know, maybe I'm going to have to go and sign up for a free week and that's going to take extra time or, you know, or whatever. So it's going to detract from wanting to exercise at all. So yeah, if you have access to, you know, even the fitness center at a hotel or, you know, outdoors, maybe you're going to be going to some place where you're going to be walking 15,000 steps that day. I mean, that's a, that's a good amount of cardio there. And to your point, I've taken bands with me places as well, because you can do a lot within your own room um, or even in that fitness center, take the bands with you, whatever the case might be, whatever is, you know, more convenient or whatever you're going to actually do, um, you know, make it that that you're going to go and do. So that way it's less like, you know, I'll, I'll speak for myself here, but, you know, we tend to, or I should say I tend to, you know, make excuses. Um, I've kind of gotten around doing that these days, of course. Um, but, oh, you know, the gym's too far, etc. I went on a trip just recently for a couple of days, many, many states away to Michigan. And, you know, luckily there was a gym that I could go to, but, you know, with me and show prep, you know, what about meals? You know, I didn't pack them and take them with me, but I had to make a plan ahead of time of, okay, once I get there, what am I going to buy? You know, how am I going to keep it cool? All these different things. So for most people, they don't have to worry about that part. But the other consideration was, okay, where's the gym near me? Or does my hotel have a gym? Yes. And yes, I have both of those available. So I made a plan ahead because for me, I don't like, uh, you know, kind of, getting there and then deciding I'm always a plan ahead person and not everybody's like that, but you know, as long as you know, the tips ahead of time, you know, once you get there, if you're not a plan ahead type of person, you know what you get there, you see that there's a gym, make use of it. Even if there's a pool, swimming's great, you know, for all sorts of different things. So utilize the pool and, and the fitness room or one or the other, if they don't have both, you know, whatever the case might be, but there's a lot out there other than just going to a gym and, and, you know, the meals, don't have to be complicated. Um, you know, mine would be a little more complicated than most people, but you know, when I'm not training and I'm not in, you know, six out, six weeks out from a show, you know, it's a different world, but it's still the same principle for me. And, you know, for most of my family and stuff, they'll look at menus or whatever, and just kind of decide. So it's less of a, you know, rush and a hustle right there to, to get everything ordered. Cause then we just kind of order what we, want, I guess would be the best way to put it, you know, or what our brain says we want versus what we probably should have. And we would, if we planned ahead. So it's always good to have, have that plan and know that you can do that, whether you're on vacation or, you know, traveling for other reasons, you know, there's always a way to kind of stay fit, you know, physically, but also with your meal selection. Yeah. You said something about the pool. That's something that I always try to do. And I have my, I have a little app. It's called D minder <clears throat> that I'll get out. And it tells me on how much vitamin D did I get this 30 minutes? It tells you when to flip over. Okay. So I, I know how much vitamin D I got from depending on where I am, you know, the elevation <clears throat> and so on. It tells me, and, and that's healthy. Um, and the last thing I'll say is, you know, there's a lot of people that can't do this, but whenever you choose one of the higher end restaurants, yeah, you're going to drop a couple hundred bucks on dinner, but those chefs at those places are really picky and they want the freshest, healthiest, organic, you know, whatever it is, chicken or vegetables or whatever, because it's their reputation and, and chefs are kind of weird with that. You know, they, they're really picky about that stuff. They're picky about what's in the food. So you're, you're always, I think, a little safer. But again, yeah, a, a lot of people, maybe most people can't go out and do that every night, you know, drop 250 bucks on their dinner um, and do that every night. But um, that's something also that will help. Um, help you know that they're not putting junk in the food because the chef won't allow that. They're, they're too weird to do that. I guess you could say. So, um, David, thanks for being with us. David is at our studio at uh, fitness for 10 in Carson city. He's a personal trainer there. 
David, if um, somebody wants to get a hold of you or see what you're doing on social media, and we talked about this in one of the last videos, how David looks in that t-shirt is not how he really looks because he's really lean right now. So it's pretty amazing what happens as you transform your body getting ready for a show. So if they want to see that or follow you on social media, how do they do that? Yeah, so they can follow me. Uh, I have two pages, one uh, on Instagram at David Wright underscore fitness. That's my fitness journey. You can see a whole lot of different transformation there, including my show prep. And then uh, at Wright Fitness Training for boot camp, personal training, that type of stuff. All right. We'll see you next time, David. All right. Thanks, Steve.